But if you look at stories, like you know, movies, books, once upon a time stories, those stories we tell other people, every single one of them has what is generally known as a moment of truth, or you know, screenwriters may refer to it as the penny drop moment. Uh, Aristotle referred to it as the anagnorisis, which I love. Um, and the anagnorisis, that name for it kind of gives us a little bit more hint about what it's really about. Because the translation of anagnorisis is recognition. And the reason is that in storytelling, that's the moment that the main character recognizes, as Aristotle says, the true nature of their circumstances. So there's some piece of information that's either recalled or revealed that kind of suddenly takes the whole world and flips it upside down in a way. What would you say is the reason that storytelling is so difficult or what keeps people from using it in their business more? What I've seen is that we we focus more on the form of story than the function of those elements, right? And so what do I mean by that? And you mentioned the hero's journey. Well, two things can happen if you think story equals hero's journey exclusively, which it doesn't, by the way. Hero's journey is one structure. It is a very common story. It's a good go-to. It's a good first place to go, but it can also be quite limiting. And I think that's one of the reasons why it can be so difficult. So what do I mean by that? Well, first off, you know, a true hero's journey is depending on what you're looking at, like seven to 12 steps. And I would say to your average business storyteller, whether that's a leader or an entrepreneur or a marketing person trying to figure out how your particular thing fits into all seven to 12 steps is a lot. And that's one of the benefits of, you know, somebody's approach like Donald Miller's story brand that simplified it, right? He simplified it to, to few, slightly fewer than seven. And so that makes it a little bit easier. But then that starts to bring in something else because it still is one kind of a story and that a hero's journey is really about a very specific thing. It's about a person who wants a thing that has to overcome odds to get that thing and that the hero is the one that saves the day. So this implies a lot. It implies the fact that the hero actually can solve this thing. The hero themselves saves the day and that one solution can solve the problem. Well, I do a lot of work with both individual experts, people who are founding like impact-based startups and nonprofits and folks like that. And one of the things that makes it so difficult is they're like, well, there isn't a villain. And, and we can't, we're not the hero and one person can't solve climate change. So how can we possibly make this work? And what ends up happening is people kind of throw their arms up and go, it just doesn't work. And we're just going to go back to our bullet points and data. <laughs> right. And so that's super frustrating to me because Oh my gosh. I think a lot of us have become familiar with why stories is so important is because our brains create stories, not necessarily once upon a time hero's journey stories, but stories in the form of kind of causal explanations, cause and effect explanations of why things happen the way they do. We do that automatically from birth without words, pre-consciously. We don't even know that we do it. And so the whole idea is that when you can put information like what you do and why it's important into a structure that your brain recognizes as a story, right? It can be such a powerful way to get your message across cleanly, clearly, without distortion and with maximum understanding, right? And who doesn't want that? But when you're trying to use a form that doesn't fit your situation, again, your, your solution is too complex or the problem is too complex where a single hero can't save the day, a single solution can't solve it, it can feel like there's nothing out there for you. And so that was a main reason why I wanted to take the approach that I did when I started to tackle this idea of, of storytelling. And that was, let's look at the elements of story that are that are present in every kind of story. Hero's journey, love story, you know, monster in the house, like whatever, you know, Western, but like, I mean, there's so many different ways to think about it, but every story has certain elements. And so if we could break down ideas into those core universal story elements, then we had a way, my idea was that 
and there are only five, and actually it's really only four that are super critical, it became a way that we could take even really complicated information and make it feel like a story. We could tell stories that didn't have endings. We could tell stories that weren't reliant on a single hero or a single solution. And we could tell stories that were appropriate to the scale of problems, both big and small. And so that was really what I was trying to do. And so far, it seems like it's working that way. So that was good. All right. And just one second, before we go on to the rest of the show, if you like what you are hearing, please make sure to hit that subscribe button or the like button or both. It helps the show grow and it shows our show to more people, helps us grow, helps us stick around. Thank you for doing it in advance. Now back to the show. Yeah. I mean, I like that because I think we often hear, well, that people aren't using the structure and then you show them the structure and they're like, well, that seems intimidating because this is right. This and massive... they're like, oh my gosh, what's this rising yeah. action, falling action, call I'm like, it doesn't, it, it's not that hard. Like it, right. it doesn't need to be that hard. It doesn't yeah. need to be that hard. Like, Unless if you you're go writing with... a three hour movie, then yeah, yes, sure. Right. Go for it. And even then they don't, it's not that hard. Right. Like, so I'm, you know, work with lots of academics and kind of technical folks. And I wanted to figure out how could I make this, turn this into something where A, didn't feel like a very heavy lift, but B, could also be framed in the form of questions that people could answer. Like, like what question is your audience asking? <laughs> like that your product or service answers. What's the real reason that, that they're not getting that answer from currently available options, All right? What do you believe about that problem that makes your solution the only one that makes sense to you? Now, how can we make that be something that your audience already agrees with? And then finally, how does that all add up to like, what's the big change in thinking or behavior that your idea, service, product, whatever it is, represents? Those are the four things. And generally, you know, again, based on my experience, those are questions that you know, they may not always be easy to answer because sometimes it takes some digging, but they are straightforward and they are in the in line with the way that that business owners, marketers, salespeople, entrepreneurs already think, right? What do people want? Why aren't they getting it now? How am I looking at this differently? Why do I think that's the right way to look at it? How do I sum this all up for somebody else? That's how people are thinking. Why? Because that's the story brain at work. You need those pieces of information to make anything make sense. And so this is, it's really an excavation process of going back and either rediscovering what your own thought process was behind your product or service, or at least reconstructing it so that somebody else can follow at least a very similar line of thinking to get to your same position, right? So those core elements, those universal elements, they can make what otherwise feels really difficult, make it feel, again, if not easy, at least much more straightforward and achievable for even folks that don't consider themselves to be quote unquote natural storytellers, uh, because we all are, by the way, but we have to put it into a format that people feel comfortable with in order for them to really get the maximum benefit of that form. Yeah. And I appreciate that. And I think this might be the moment where people want to like rewind and figure out like, what did I just miss? Because there's a lot there. But if you are thinking about the format she was just talking about, after you've established your goal, it was problem, truth, change, and action. And all of yeah. these are detailed in her book, The Red Thread, how to find and tell the story of your ideas. The other thing I want to mention is if we can dive a little bit deeper into the truth part. Cause for me, this was, I think mm. what's the most interesting kind of light bulb when I'm going through this stuff is the discovering a truth that demands a choice. For me, I'm like, I can find a lot of truths, but when you say demands a choice, it makes me think a little bit. So maybe we can dive into like, what does it mean to find a truth that demands a choice? Yeah. So the, the reason why the truth is one of those five elements, um, it's a goal, problem, truth, and truth is the one that most people skip, by the way. A lot of times we just do problem solution. But if you look at stories like you know, movies, books, once upon a time stories, those stories we tell other people, every single one of them has what 
is generally known as a moment of truth, or you know, screenwriters may refer to it as a penny drop moment. Uh, Aristotle referred to it as the anagnorisis, which I love. Um, and the anagnorisis, that name for it kind of gives us a little bit more hint about what it's really about, because the translation of anagnorisis is recognition. And the reason is that in storytelling, that's the moment that the main character recognizes, as Aristotle says, the true nature of their circumstances. So there's some piece of information that's either recalled or revealed that kind of suddenly takes the whole world and flips it upside down in a way. And it's like, oh, well, wait a minute. Dang it. And the thing is, is that it, when that realization, if somebody you know has it and then agrees that it's true, done well, it should absolutely put what they want in complete jeopardy. And so that's why it demands a choice because you have to choose at that moment. Do I not believe this thing that I believe? Unlikely, very difficult to get someone to unbelieve something they believe. Do I not want the thing that I want anymore? Again, also unlikely, very difficult to unwant that a thing that I want. But sometimes in that moment, some can someone can deprioritize. Um, or the last thing is, or do I need to shift my thinking to do something else so that I can resolve this tension between what I want and what I believe? And that's where, when I come to like creating a way to talk about your ideas that makes them irresistible, that's why that truth statement, as I like to call it, is, is so critical. The uh, thing that comes to mind is just the idea that like people, like they're, they're discerning these days. They are smart. They already have truths that they have embedded in them. So finding a way to almost make something their idea because it it resonates with something that they already believe absolutely makes sense to me. Well, I appreciate the time you've given us today. If you guys want to learn more, everything you can find about Tamsin is at her website, tamsinwebster.com. The book was Find Your Red Thread, Make Your Big Ideas Irresistible and more to come. Uh, thank you and thank you guys for listening and we will catch you all next time. Brands on brands.